Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make Sandy's Treehouse, also featuring Tree Dome, from the show SpongeBob SquarePants. Please remember that if you enjoy this video, hit that like button. It really helps me out so much, you have no idea. It's the best thing you can do to support the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And remember, if you would like to make any more SpongeBob related builds, please check out the card system and the description below for the SpongeBob builds playlist that'll have all of those builds that you can see in the background and even more and it'll also include all future spongebob related builds such as mrs puff's boating school that is in the card system and the description below it'll be so easy to find guys i think i have like 10 spongebob related builds so it'd keep you busy for quite a while so without any further ado Let's get started. So before we begin, I should let you know to make the tree house and the tree dome, you will need roughly 33 blocks by a 39 block area. That's about 33 blocks coming across the front, left to right, and about 39 blocks going from front to back. That is all the space that you will need for the entire dome. You also need all of these materials right here in there's not even that many of them. Make sure that you have them all. I might have forgotten some. I've tried my best not to, but I might have forgotten some. Once you have every single one of these, and pause the video if necessary, if you need to grab the materials, and if you have to make this grid in your world, I'd highly suggest you do. It does make things a lot easier. Well, once you have done all of those things, we can begin. So, if you have made the grid for yourself, you want to begin on the front left-hand corner of that grid which is this block and you want to count to the right by from this corner block one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so on top of this block you want to place a row of three gray concrete coming upwards one two three and then go right one up one right two one two then go down one right one connect to the ground like that so this is the entrance to the dome place an iron door in the very center of the entrance and place light gray concrete all the way around it like that then place buttons all the way in around the door in front of the light gray concrete not only is that a little bit more factual because the door's supposed to be like that weird metal stuff that's like joined together and you can see those like screw things not only is it practical but it does also look better as well and you want to place the buttons on the back of the light gray concrete too so that you'll actually be able to get out now once you've done that you want to grab the white glass and you want to extend back all of the grey concretes backwards by five rows using your glass. So all of the grey concrete, one, two, three, four, five. And you want to do this in every single case that we have the grey concrete. It's not 100% necessary that you do the corner blocks like this one, but you can do. There's no real reason why you why you shouldn't, really, because it is just a, a walkway. You're probably not going to be putting anything inside here, so there's no reason why you would want to maximize the amount of space that you have. But we want to have something which should look like this, and that is five rows of glass extended towards the tree dome. We then want to place a row of grey concrete behind that fifth layer of glass so you want to place a row of gray concrete just like that and that is the same as the row of gray that we have on the outer part place a door in the middle of this empty space and place light gray concrete around the door and then place buttons in front of the light grey concrete, which once again, not only does it look a bit better, but you can actually use them to open the door, so it's quite a bonus. And place the buttons also on the back of the light grey concrete too, because then that will also allow you to bloop, there we go, just like that. So that is like the chamber that you would walk through to actually get inside of the tree dome. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to build up the actual dome, and then we'll add stuff inside of it. 
So the dome itself will require pretty much just white stained glass. And the way that we want to begin the dome is we want to go left of the inner entrance and we want to go left of this bottom grey block. So going left of this block, looking down at the ground like this, towards the back, place two glass going left. One, two. Then in the ground, do an up left diagonal. And go left by four. One, two, three, four. Do an up left diagonal. And go left two. One, two. Do two up left diagonals. One, two. Go up by two. One, two. Two, do an up left diagonal, then go up by four. One, two, three, four. Do an up left diagonal and go up by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do an up right diagonal and go up by four. One, two, three, four. Do an upper right diagonal and go up by two. One, two. Then do two upper right diagonals. One, two. Then go right by two. One, two. Do an upper right diagonal and go right by four. One, two, three, four. Do an upper right diagonal and go right by eight. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do a bottom right diagonal and go right by four. One, two, three, four. Do a bottom right diagonal and go right by two. One, two. Do two bottom right diagonals. One, two. And go down by two. One, two. Do a bottom right diagonal and go down by four. One, two, three, four. Do a bottom right diagonal and go down by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do a bottom left diagonal and go down by four. One, two, three, four. Do a bottom left diagonal and go down by two. One, two. Do two bottom left diagonals. One, two. Go left, two. One, two. Do a bottom left diagonal and go left by four. One, two, three, four. Do a bottom left diagonal and go left by one. And if you've done all of that correctly, you should connect all the way back to where you very first started and you should have this. This kind of looks like, kind of like a balloon or a light bulb. I don't know which one it is. But that's what we want to have. I'll give you a moment whilst you look at that. And once you have made sure that you've got that correct, and I'm sure that you'll you'll know pretty easily because you'll have either connected back or you won't. Once you have done that, we can move on to the next part. The next part is very simple, however tedious. We want to take all of the glass that we have just placed and you want to add four more rows on top. That is four. One, two, three, four. And this wants to be applied to every single glass that you have just placed. The way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to go all the way around, back and forth, or maybe I'll just do this clockwise, and I'm going to place four rows of glass on top of every single one of the glass that I have placed on the ground. This will make the glass five blocks high in total, because of course we already had one row, and by the time we've added four to it, we will have five. I'm going to do this in silence because I don't want to irritate you guys, but all we have to do is stack four rows of glass directly on top in whatever method you decide.
Now, something that I did also forget to mention, but hopefully it'll be quite intuitive, is that you want to connect the glass together above the interior entrance, but I'm sure that you guys did that anyway because you wouldn't want to have any holes in your build. Now, once you have added all of those four rows of glass, the next part is to add the inner layer of glass. To do this, simply one row higher, and one row inwards in relation to that last layer of glass that you have placed, you want to place another row of glass. This layer of glass, however, does not want to connect at the corners. So as an example, we've already done a bit of it now, one row higher, one row inwards, not connecting together at the corners. Now, this is an important distinction because later on, we will be doing this and we will be connecting it together at the corners. Uh, you see, it completely, it provides a completely different shape when you do connect it at the corners. When you connect it at the corners, it gives it a, a more round shape which uh, can look a little bit weird if you start doing it on like the lower layers when you're trying to make something, uh, some sort of dome or some sort of sphere. I've found that it's better to not connect at the corners down at the bottom and this applies to loads of builds like my Mickey Mouse's Clubhouse, even previous Spongebob builds where you've got to make some form of cylinder. Uh, it's better not to connect it together at the corners at the bottom and to do it at the top. So that is the layer of glass. Now, once you have that single layer of glass, you want to add three more rows of glass on top. That'll look like one, two, and three, like that. And you want to do this on top of that single layer of glass that you have just placed. So, once again, I'm going to do this in silence. You, you simply want to add three rows on top of it, three. Perfect, just like that. So from that one layer of glass, we have added three layers on top. This gives us a thickness or a depth or a height, however you want to say it, of four blocks tall. Now once you have done that, we now, once again, want to add a layer of glass that is one row above and one row inside that last layer of glass. And this layer of glass, once again, does not want to connect together at the corners because this would fundamentally change the shape of the tree dome and it would look, in my opinion, a little bit worse. But completely up to you how you want to tackle, uh, tackle these things. But just to remind you again, it's one row above, one row inside. We're slowly shrinking the shape as it is a dome, it's not like a, just like a big giant cylinder or whatever, and uh, we, we just want to shrink it, slowly bring it up, slowly bring it inwards, and uh, there's actually not loads and loads of layers left, which I'm sure you guys will be quite happy with. So, we've almost done the single layer, which should look like this, that's your single layer, and on top of this, we only want to add two rows of glass on top of it. So that will look like one and two. However, the two rows of glass, of course, wants, want to be dispersed 
all the way around on top of this row. So I'm going to get this done once again in silence because I don't want to annoy you guys because I'll just keep rabbiting on about nonsensical things. And I will be back once I have added those two layers of glass. I've almost done the first one already. Okay, so we have successfully added those two layers of glass. Now once you have done this, we once again want to add another layer of glass, one row above and one row inside of our tree dome. But do bear in mind that it, this is going to this is going to come to a close sometime soon because we're, we're getting to the point where we're not really going to be adding that many more layers. And we are getting quite high, as you might have also noticed. If you have reached this point right here, we, we actually have a pretty decent height on the dome, and you could even make it bigger if you liked. However, the point of redoing these SpongeBob builds were to make these builds easier and more accessible. So if you don't have like three hours to make uh, Sandy's original tree dome, then this one that can be built in an hour, I would imagine, is, uh, is a nice compromise. So once you have that single layer of glass, all we have to do is add an additional layer on top. And we only want to add one layer. You see, this is the final layer of glass which is going to have multiple layers. We are only going to be adding three more rows of glass in total from this layer. So, once you have added your additional layer of glass, which I've almost done, it doesn't even take too long. So, once you have added your additional layer of glass, like this, we can now shape the glass. So. From here, we want to add yet another layer of glass above and inside. But the difference with this layer of glass is that this glass would wants to be connected together at the corners. This will give it a much more rounded shape. Also, I am going to point out now, if you would like to add additional layers of glass, layers upon layers upon layers, until you eventually get the right shape, you see, I'm going to be stopping at three layers. This this is the first of the three. But that's just more of a time thing. You can, uh, if, if you would like to further, um, further refine the shape of your dome and make it more pleasing to yourself, then I would highly suggest uh, doing, uh, doing just that. But you can see the difference in this layer than the other layers is that it is connected together at the corners and you'll see that over time it is going to build a rounded shape. Now once you've done that once, we want to do this again. So this is going to be the second time that we are placing just a single layer, this is just one, just one layer of glass above and inside of this. And this is going to be two of three. So we are only going to be doing this one more time. And the difference between this layer and the next layer is that the next one we will also be filling in the top. So this is this is where you've got to make your decision where whether or not you would like to once again change the shape a little bit because you you, you could probably get quite a bit of a better shape, but it'll require a lot more layers. You see, so that is the second layer of glass, and it, it's not looking too bad at that right like it's looking nice and dome shaped but once you have added that second layer we're going to do another layer this is going to be the third layer and this is going to be the last one so once again above and inside of the previous uh, previous layer of glass i'm tired of saying layer layer i'll say it differently i'll say it like the star wars character layer princess layer of glass that doesn't make any sense that just sounds bizarre so this is the last last row of glass that we're going to be placing 
And it's you don't get it's, it's not a bad shape whatsoever. I just realized that it could be a little bit more rounded. But Sandy's dome is kind of like quite flat on top. So and you know it's it's kind of up to you. But uh, you've got like a nice rounded shape, especially from the bottom as well. Uh, so now, do I want to add one more? Ah, uh, I don't know whether to change it and just add one more. You know what, guys? Against my better judgment, usually I would just fill the top of this thing in. But I'm going to add just one more, one more layer of glass, right? And this layer of glass is going to be the last one, and I'm going to fill it in. Okay, so the entire top of the tree dome now, I'm going to add one more layer of glass and it's going to be above the previous layer and I'm just going to fill in the tree dome as I go to. So I, th I, I, this is, I actually, th this is an extra layer than I did plan on, but I do think it might make it look a little bit better. So it's up to you how much work you want to do. It's really not that bad just to place another layer. So you know, you want to have something which should look like this, which is really hard to see, like glass on glass. But uh, now all we're going to do is we're just going to fill the top of this in using your white glass. So this is actually going to be quite a tedious process because it is quite a large area. So once again, I'm going to dip out of this whilst I do fill in the top of the tree dome using my glass but once we have done this we have the fun of making the tree inside of the tree dome which is also very tedious <laughs> so uh yeah And there we go. I do think that that extra layer of glass actually has made a bit of a difference. I do think that that actually looks a bit better. It does. I think that that was well worth it. From the sides and from the top, it definitely looks a bit more well-rounded. So once you yourself have achieved this dome, we can actually build inside of it. It's quite a feat that we've actually managed to do this. Now, once you have completed that, and of course, pause the video if necessary, make your way inside of the tree dome. Ah, oh, it's so glorious in here. I, I really love it. I usually make the tree first, and then the dome around it. It's so, it's, it's kind of cool to actually be inside of it. It's kind of, it's re I really like this. Anyway, so we're going to begin with the tree. We're going to get rid of the big bit. So, to position the tree in the middle of the dome, it's quite easy. Make your way to the door. This is the interior door. From this door, yeah, from this door, you want to count inwards. And you want to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Place an oak wood. From the oak wood, go left and up by two. One, two. Go right two. One, two. And down two. One, two. Now, if you've done that correctly, you should find that the tree is in the very center of the dome, which is very important to have the tree in the center of the dome, honestly. So, you, you can also figure it out, like, if you know where the middle of the dome is, like, it's quite easy to see, like, that, that block there should correspond with the middle block on that side. This block here should be the middle block on that side. This block here should be the middle block on that side. Like, it's quite easy to figure it out. But that's the base of the tree. Well, on top of this tree, we want to add seven rows of oak wood. So on top of all of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we want to do this on top of every single oak wood. And I do want to warn you that the tree portion of this, because of the nature of trees and how random they are, I, I, it's kind of going to be like, you're going to have to do this little bit yourself, kind of, and I, I'll show you what I mean. So, once you've done this, we now want to add some jungle leaves. We want to make the top of the tree before we shape the trunk. So, from this seventh block, this one, or maybe so we'll start one down. From this block here, we want to place a row of jungle leaves. Now, we want to make kind of like a, a circle 
or kind of like an oval, okay? And this is how we're going to do it. It's, it's going to be very rough, and it's going to look like the outline of it is going to look kind of like this. And uh, I'm, again, like it's, it, it's so hard to explain how to do this. Um, but we kind of want to have a nice circular shaped sort of like oval shaped tree in the middle of the tree dome And we're, we're just gonna start off with this very basic shape here And uh, I want you guys to kind of copy this but also do, do your own thing a little bit too So you know just just make it a little bit different So you kind of you kind of want to have a shape that should look like that, right? It's, it's kind of like an oval, but it's it's not quite perfect, and, and that's kind of what we want to do. Now, once we have this shape, the point of this is that we want to add another row of this in front of it. So you want to add another row of leaves in front of this. And bear this in mind that the tree doesn't want to be that big. We don't want to have a massive tree. So you, you kind of want to just have like another row of the tree in front of itself. Something like that, right? Something that, that's completely fine. Maybe even a little bit too big, to be honest with you. We could, uh, could maybe even shrink it. So once you have a shape like this, we want to add another row of jungle leaves. Once again, kind of like above and inside of this. But as with the nature of trees, like you don't want the tree to look too... You, you don't want the tree to look too perfect, right? You don't want it to look look exactly like the shape that uh, you don't want it to look exactly like the starting shape. So you want to you want to bring it in a bit. You don't want it to be like the dome where it's like a nice perfect perfect circle sort of deal. You want it to you want it to come in a little bit in some places. You want it to look a little bit random. And in some places, I mean, you know, you want you kind of want this sort of thing, right? And you want it to be a bit random. That's kind of the nature of trees. And you know, you can you can prune it and you can knock certain blocks away and you can, you know, add certain blocks here and there where you see fit to better shape the tree. And I, I kind of want my tree to peak a little bit better there. I think that that would actually look a bit better too. But uh, you guys kind of get the idea. We want to make a tree like this. And once you've added one layer of jungle leaves, we're going to add a final layer. This is going to be the last one because I don't want it to. Uh, I don't want the tree to be too too big, to be honest. Because I don't want it to take the entirety of. Uh, <laughs> I don't want it to take up the entire dome. But uh, we're going to add. A layer in another layer, so this is going to be the final layer, something like this, just inside the tree. And uh, you know, ju just keep messing about with it until you are eventually happy with it. That is going to be my best advice that I can give you on this because it, this looks nothing like my original. And uh, just just make a nice, a nice big, good looking tree for your own uh, for your own satisfaction. So that's not a bad place to start, really. Let's bring it, like shape it a little bit better there. Maybe knock a block off there. That's not a bad looking tree, it's really not. And then we could even add some more bits over here just to make it look a tad more realistic, you know. Something something like that. Yeah, that, that's not a bad looking tree. I, I think it is perhaps a bit too poofy in that section. But, uh, you know, something like that's perfectly fine. And it will look better once we shape the trunk too, which we will be doing. So, once you've done all of that on the front, we want to come to the back. Uh, the best place to start is by making the outline of the of the leaves level with the back of the trunk. So if you just extend the leaves backwards until they are about the same, you know, about the same depth as the trunk, about, you know, they come out about as far as the back of the trunk, then uh, that uh, that's actually not a bad starting place at all, like this. So now you can see they all come to the back of the trunk. And we also want to extend them outwards again, so the we want to extend them one block further out and also connect them together at the bottom too. And then we'll add about two layers, I think, about two layers onto the back. I mean, you can do three, but as I say, you, do, you don't want to take the entire of the inside up. So, you know, we've got a nice outline now. And uh, then we're going to be adding, I'm going to add a few, preemptively, I'm going to add a few jungle leaf blocks like inside, like this. Just to kind of like round out the corners a little bit. The back of the tree can be completely different to the front of the tree. It really isn't uh, really isn't a big deal. I'm going to cover up that hole that I just see there. But something like this works just fine. 
that's not too bad. And then I can just focus on adding another layer of jungle leaves that is, it's once again, you know, it wants to be one row inwards and one row inside, and you just want to make a shape that you find pleased. And I, I don't know how many different different ways and how many times I should say this, but this is going to be individual. I, I, I did kind of point that out before we started this. You want your tree to look how you want it to look. You know, it's not necessarily going to look exactly like mine. Mine's kind of like a funky shape at the moment, to be honest. But, uh, you know, I, if, if this wasn't like my final tree house, uh, then if, if this was the one that I wanted to absolutely show everybody, then I, I would, uh, I'd obviously make it a little bit, uh, a little bit more in tune to my taste. But I, I kind of got the original version right, so I'm not spending loads of time on this version. And then I'm going to add one more row in front of all of the empty space to kind of just finish it off a little bit. And that will be... That will be that. So, once again, just keep shaping it until you're happy with it. I'm just kind of filling in the empty space because I don't want the tutorial to be dead, dead, dead long. But, you know, something like that looks fine. It, it doesn't even look too bad like that. So, that is the tree. Right, that's the tree portion. That doesn't look natural at all. The the front looks quite unnatural, to be honest with you. But you know, we'll we'll leave it at that. Just keep shaping it until you're happy with it. Is all I can keep telling you. The trunk of the tree, however, also has to be shaped. So bear in mind that the entrance to the tree is going to be here, right? Roughly here. We're going to have like an entrance here. So if you come all the way down to the bottom of the front of the tree and you knock out the two middle blocks down at the base of the tree, that's where the door is going to be. And around the door, you kind of just want to build up some wood, right? So you do, you just want to use your oak wood to kind of like... Sh what, what sort of shape do you have at the base of the tree? It's usually a little bit thicker sometimes, like especially in fantasy stuff, right? Like the tree is a little bit thicker at the base. And it's usually got, sometimes it's got some like roots around the base of the tree like that. I'm actually going to, I'm going to kind of build the entrance in a little bit, kind of like this. And you know, you've usually got some roots, it usually comes out a little bit. Sometimes the roots can even come a little bit further. Uh, you see, it's, it's kind of interesting, uh, interesting about this is we kind of want to, we do want to have some roots around the base of the tree because that's going to expand the living situation inside of it. And you can even shape the trunk a little bit as well, like you can knock out some blocks here and there to make it look a little bit more, you know, quote unquote, unrealist, uh, more realistic. So, you know, something like that actually improves the shape of the tree a little bit, although now it is a little too thick at the base. So, you know, something like that would actually look quite good. That doesn't look too bad at all. If we just knock out this block, maybe, maybe this block, that doesn't look too bad. Maybe knock that one out. And it's probably a little bit too thick on this side too, but you can't, you've kind of got to strike a balance with that. That doesn't look too bad. That's that's not an awful looking trick. I, I kind of don't like that actually. I, I quite like the entrance there and I might even move the entrance like that far out. Mm, no, I, I actually don't like that. So I'll tell you what, I'll, the, the entrance can stay there. And then, what do we have there? So that's that's not too bad. And then I'm going to delete that block, add that one in. I don't want the tree to look exactly like that. That's that's not like a that's not like an awful uh, that's not like a bad looking tree at all, really. Uh, maybe there. Yeah, the, the problem the problem with this is you could literally just spend ages and ages and ages just messing about with the base of your tree. But you guys kind of get the point, right? You want to keep messing about with it until you are eventually happy with the base of your tree. That's that's kind of the point. I, d I do kind of want to cover up the entrance a little bit. Maybe something like that. That looks kind of fine. Yeah, that, that looks fine. That looks completely fine to me, really. And uh, I mean, I could even, I could tell you what, I could even like knock out those blocks. I think that actually kind of looks a little bit better. So that's the sort of thing that you want to do with the base of your tree until you're eventually happy with it. There are a couple of things inside of the tree dome that I would suggest adding. So there's a picnic table, which will require oakwood stairs, oakwood slabs, red carpet, white carpet, and I'm also going to use a little bit of spruce wood slab as well. Maybe even grab a chest because I think it lightens things up a bit. Okay, so as for the positioning of the picnic table, uh, it kind of wants to be in the front right hand corner of the dome. And I'm going to start about here, like like in here. You see where we have that like row of nine? I'm going to begin the table about here, so it's not too close to the front of the dome. I'm going to begin with a nice little seating bench. So this is going to be three spruce wood slams in a row on the floor. That's going to be like one, two, three. And you don't have to be specific with this, guys. Just point that out. Don't have to be specific. Then one row away from the bench that we've created, 
We're going to leave a gap of one. And we want to place a solid oak wood plank block in line with the left end of the bench. And we want to go right of this block by two using oak wood slabs. This is the upper half of it. One, two. And place an upside down oak wood stairs to the right. Also place an upside down oak wood stairs left of the oak plank block. Destroy the plank and place an oak wood slab instead. So you want to have this shape. We then want to place a row of oak wood slabs in front of this. And then oak wood slabs in front of the three middle blocks. And then an upside down oak wood stairs on the ends of the oak wood slabs. Like this. We want to place a bench opposite the middle of the table on the other side. So these three middle blocks, you leave a gap of one and place the spruce wood slab bench. And then we want to create a picnic table pattern. So if you place a white carpet on top of the four corners, and then you place red carpet next to all of the white carpets where you can, and then you place white carpets next to the red carpets where you can, and then a red carpet all the way in the middle, you have a nice picnic pattern. And I kind of like the idea of just having like a little chest here at the end of the table, just because, I don't know, it kind of kind of makes sense with like the whole picnic thing. I don't know. that I, I prefer it. Now, once you've done that, the only other notable thing inside of this area is Sandy's wheel, which I assume she exercises on. We need grey concrete and light grey concrete. That's all you need. So if you come to the back left-hand corner of the dome, somewhere around here, probably not too far away from the tree, maybe about here or so, here, I'm going to place a grey concrete. And I'm going to place, coming upwards and backwards from this, a light grey concrete. Like that. I'm going to extend the light grey concrete to the left by three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to do an up, two up-left diagonals. That's one, two. And I'm going to go up by three. One, two, three. And two upper right diagonals. One, two. And right by three. One, two, three. And two bottom right diagonals. One, and two. And down by three. One, two, three. Then I'm going to do a bottom left diagonal like this. And we've connected back. I also want to place a grey concrete here, coming downwards diagonally from this light grey concrete. And then from this area, I'm going to place two rows of light, uh, two rows of dark grey inside of this. So I want to place two rows of dark grey inside of this circle. And this is kind of like her little running wheel. So you know how, well, I was about to call her a hamster, which I, I guess I, I guess that she would probably hate. But Sandy has a little running wheel. So once you have two gray rows of concrete you want to add a row of light gray concrete yeah she she is absolutely not a hamster but uh i guess she she still has a wheel i guess squirrels also like little running wheels and i'm also going to place gray concrete here and here just as kind of like feet that kind of like just stick it to the ground and and, and that's kind of what we're after and that is Sandy's little running wheel in the back of her, I almost called it a cage, in the back of her tree dome. And that's all of the detail that you really need. If you want to add like bone meal around the place, then you're more than welcome to add some bone meal. Or if you want to add perhaps, I mean, you can add some, maybe some brown carpet, some green carpet and some lime carpet. Like if you like, you can also add some like green carpet and um, like green, uh, lime carpet and stuff like around the base of the tree. And it just, it kind of looks like fallen leaves and stuff on the ground. You're more than welcome to do that if you think that that looks a little bit better. Maybe even a little bit of brown carpet on top of some parts of the uh, open parts of the tree. Adds a little bit more detail as well. And of course, you are more than welcome to bone meal the area. However, I wouldn't recommend it because I, I don't think that that would look good. But uh, you guys get the idea. I hate that block specifically. I think that that looks ever so slightly better now. But now... <laughs> made no difference but yeah ladies and gentlemen that is the that sandy's tree dome actually complete i don't know whether you realize that that's that's actually the tree dome complete if you have a look from the outside it actually looks really really good now the only thing that i am going to do here uh is i'm going to get rid of all the letters and stuff and all of the numbers and stuff around on side on the ground and i'm also going to add a little bit of sand around the tree dome uh just to i don't know really just to 
uh, add a little bit more of a SpongeBob feel, you know, with some sand. But that's that's pretty much everything, guys. That is the tutorial done. Let me add some sand and stuff. Let me clean it up a little bit so that we can see it in all of its glory. But I'll be back in just a second. And this is what Sandy's treehouse featuring Tree Dome will look like once it's been 100% fully complete. As you can see, all I've literally done is I've gotten rid of all of the lines that were on the floor, added a little bit of sand around the dome, and honestly, I, I really like how that looks. Oh, and also, if you are going to add sand around the dome, remember to add it inside of, like, the chamber that you, like, walk through, like, the entering chamber. You can, I'd, I would highly recommend adding it there because uh, it just makes sense. Now, once you have completed the dome, there's... I, I don't know where I was going with that. I'm hoping that you guys have enjoyed this video. I really don't know where, where I was going with that last sentence. I, if you guys have enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that like button. It helps me out so much. You've got no idea. It's, it's such a great help to me and the channel. I'd really appreciate it. If you would like to subscribe to the channel so that you can check out all of my other builds, please hit the subscription button and click the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you got my stuff sent directly to your sub box, which does not always happen. It does not, unfortunately. And if you would like to check out any more of my SpongeBob related builds, please do not forget the card system and the description below, which will have my SpongeBob builds playlist in it, which will show you how to make all of these past builds that you can see materializing right in front of your eyes. And also future builds. We do have a couple more left to do. Oh, and it also does have all sorts of other builds in it as well. I'll also link loads and loads of playlists that will include all sorts of other different cartoon-related builds, movie-related builds, game-related builds, and even some uh, real house-related builds too. You know, stuff that you'd, that you'd actually want to live in in the survival world that maybe isn't cartoony, like modern houses and uh, suburban houses and some survival houses too. It'll have all of it down there in the card system and the description below. Now, that's pretty much everything. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day and goodbye. And this video subscriber shout out goes to. I've, I've realized I'm never going to be downloading that sound effect. It's, it's just never going to happen. Gaming 1403 Girl. I see you commenting on the channel a lot. And I just wanted to say at the end of this video that I appreciate all of the nice comments that I see you leaving on the videos. And. You are perfect for this video as well, because you commented last week, very nice, can you do Sandy's dome tutorial please, and well, <laughs> well, if that isn't perfect, I don't know what is. So, thank you so much Gaming1403Girl for supporting the channel, leaving nice comments, you do have more comments than these, however, I'm far too lazy to go and find all of them. Thank you so much, I will be leaving a link to your channel in the description below, just in case you have any videos, and if you guys want to uh, show any support to uh, Gaming Girl, then I would really appreciate that as well. But thank you so much for commenting, I really do love all of my subscribers that do like the videos, that do share them, that subscribe, click the little bell, and just continue to leave nice feedback feedback on them. I really do appreciate you, no end, every single one of you. Once again, thank you so much, Gaming Girl. I really do appreciate you, and who knows? Who knows will be cho who will be chosen next time? It could even be you. Yes, you. I'm, I'm pointing